Okay, now what I'm about to show here is definitely not advocated by my employer because we are going to copy some patent technology. Now, you've got to get yourself some copper wire. Now, whether it be an old CRT tube thingy, um, a electric motor, a transformer, you've just got to get some copper wire. Um, try not to go for too heavy uh, copper wire. You want thinner stuff and get it out in one big lump like that without hacking through it or anything you want to be able to get a nice piece like this and be able to have a lo as long a piece of copper wire as you can get um, and when you get it you might want to get rid of the little bits of tape and the glue and whatnot. Um, so String it out, unstring it out to a big long piece, um, and then you got to do this. Now look at a little bit here. Now what's this? This is a stove lighter. Uh, it's probably better to use a candle. It is a stupid idea to use a cigarette lighter because you'll burn your fingers. Because you've got to burn all this. Now there's insulation, fine insulation on this stuff. So watch this. See, she's smoking up. Now you've got to burn that off. Then you get your scarer and you fold her over like so. And you run your, your thing through it there, your wire through it. Um, you, you know, you, you pull your wire through it. Don't go really, really tight and pull your wire through and then snap your wire. It's better to go lighter and do it like five times or something uh, until all your ash, so to speak, from your burnt insulation is gone. Um, because if you snap the wire, then, you know, it's not that great. It, it's best if you don't. Uh, now, you can use a grain scarer like that. You can use fine steel wool. I don't recommend the bigger stainless steel um, scarers. Sandpaper probably is not practical, really. It might be if you've got, like, the fine jewellery stuff. Um, but basically, you've got to clean that wire to get clean copper wire and if you don't burn it off and rub it clean then when it's on your stove pipe it's going to catch on fire at some point and stink your room out and might surprise a few people to see flames coming off your stove pipe anyways what you do after that is something that is rather hard for me to do on camera at times so just wait for a second and I'll readjust things here and then I'll show you how it's done You need to get yourself a bolt of a type, at least 5 sixteenths. Um, the bigger the better, actually. And you get you a little bit of wire, and you sit it at the back of your bolt and put one of your thumbs there, like that, and your index finger like that. Now what you're going to try and do is hook it into the thread of the bolt, and, and have your other thumb on the bottom like that. And, you know, there's different ways and different knacks of doing this. It is not easy to master it in 20 seconds. But here we are. Putting copper wire into the thread. And I've got the big copper wire dangling on the ground, theoretically. And it's coming up through there. And I've got my thumb held there. And I just keep spinning. And this is something you want to do when you really have too much time on your hands or you're really bored or whatever um, it'll take a long time to do and that's slipping because you've got to keep your, your finger on the start and if you don't you'll realize that you're not actually getting anywhere with it so you've got to keep that one anyway you keep going and going and going and going and I'll keep going and going with this one I'll speed her up a little bit yeah. mm. You may find that sticking your finger over the end like that um, helps. Um, and if you've got a really long bolt, it's really good because purely the tension of the first lot being on it should eventually cause it to sort of tighten on its own. And you won't need to hold your finger on the end and you can just sit there spinning like this. Um, there may be automated ways you can work out how to do this using a cordless drill. Um, but there we go. We've got it on there. And now we've got to go backwards and spin it off. Now the end piece of this will be gnarly. The ends always are a bit funny on it. But as you're spinning it off, don't put pressure on it because you'll crush it. 
keep your fingers as you're spinning it off, keep your fingers on the actual bolt. And, what do you know? Comes out like that. Now you can play with that and sort of go, sort of rub your fingers along it, sort of rub your fingers along it gently, um, holding it with one set of fingers on one side and then sort of just sort of slowly brushing that, but you've got to be careful, you've got to be very careful. A lot of these things, it just takes a lot of knack um, to do it. it, it's not really, you know, there'll be different methods that you'll work out uh, that suit you best and you'll get a knack for it. Um, but you end up with a little bit of wire like that and you say, well, that's great, now what do we do? You get another piece of wire and you thread it through the middle. And then, once that's threaded through the middle, you go to your stove pipe, which is symbolised by a Coke can here, and you wrap it around your stove pipe, like I have with this Coke can. Keep wrapping around, wrapping around, wrapping. just spiral around it. Then, you have to find some point at the top to tie it off to. Now, you probably want to work from the top down, but you've got to find something that you can tie that bit of wire off to. Now, it may mean that you've got to put a steel screw through your stove pipe and wrap it around that. You may have a sleeve which has bolts and you can wrap it around the end of the bolt. You may have a heat guard you can tie it off to. You may have a lot of different things you can tie it off to, but for the love of God, don't tie it off to anything wood or anything like that. Try and tie it off to something on a stove pipe or that is reasonably well insulated or that is a larger piece of steel, not tight, tight to a blooming tiny little screw that's stuck on, you know, some thin thing like plasterboard with paper backing on it or something stupid that's going to cause a fire. So you wrap that around and around and around and around. And finally, you have it what's known as a pin fin heat transfer technology on your stove pipe and that copper wire is liable to get red hot your little coils are liable to get red hot um, but you know it'll transfer the heat into the room as opposed to leave the heat in the smoke that then goes out your chimney um, or your flue and you can even do this with gas heaters uh, if you've got a, like a propane heater is what I meant to say, um, if you've got one of those with a big flue pipe, you know, it's an idea to do it to them as well to get as much as you can out of it. Um, now, you may say, I've got a whole heap of broken little bits. I didn't manage to do it long. What can I do? Well, still, you can string them on side by side like that and you can get the wire and you can tie one piece of wire off to the other end of the broken bit of wire and just string all these little bits on um, you know and if your wire only goes like about a metre and a half or something like that um, you know then you've got to tie that bit of wire off to another piece and just keep going and just connect them all together as best you can um, and string them all on like stringing well beads on a necklace um, and you know do the best you can um, I realise this is not very easy with thin wire to be able to avoid breaking it at times. Um, but yeah, that technology is known as pin fin. It is used in process cooling, which is often oil refineries, um, abattoirs and other sort of factories uh, where basically what they do with a real deal is they use copper pipe. It might be one inch copper pipe, I think it usually is. and they have this <coughs> machine that basically makes these coils and this wire in the middle is actually completely covered in solder and then they feed the pipe in and I think they do anyway, I haven't actually seen it in operation, I have seen a lot of the finished product though um, and what they do is basically wrap this around the one inch copper pipe and this is all getting you know, twist it around as it's going through the machine and it solders this centre wire directly to the copper pipe and that, that centre wire is effectively covered in solder. Now you say, well, why 
shouldn't we just solder it there as opposed to tie it to a screw or a, or something that's on the uh, stovepipe, some sort of bracket or whatever? Well, there's a pretty easy answer to that. Your stovepipe is liable to get that hot, it will melt the solder and the whole lot will just collapse and fall down the stovepipe. I mean, easily stovepipes get that hot. If I can melt aluminium in my wood heater, I can tell you right now, solder ain't going to flame and last at all. Um, and, you know, these things that they use them in, in, you know, industrial applications, they obviously don't get that hot that they melt the solder. Um, so it's not an issue. But there you go. That's basically bona fide heat transfer technology, but an improvised version, uh, which will help you get the most out of your firewood.